what is it that comes to mind in terms of what what we might be going to cover over the next little while? For me, mm. yeah. Uh, it's, for me, it's about the art of defending, but not just in terms of the physical essence around what makes a good defender, but also the mentality that's involved with defending. Um, and, and and how to best prepare yourself as a, as a defender and what it actually means to to the players to to be a good defender, both in terms of technical with the ball, but also for me predominantly without the ball, um, and then the ability to adapt based on who you're playing against, and and, and also the mental side that's involved in terms of staying in the game at times when things aren't going right for you as a defender. What did football sort of look like to you? Um, were you always a defender? Um, you know, how much were you training? Um, what were you doing, etc.? So obviously, so I, I mean, I never went through any um, national team programs or state programs like we, we we had counties over in the uk and i never went through any county programs or any club programs i i played for my school and i played for my sunday league team um and i would have i would have done i would have trained every day maybe sometimes twice a day if i was doing in school and club um, but I would have then also had spent an incredible amount of time actually going over the park on my own or with my mates and having a kick about with my mates, particularly sort of around 13, 14 at that age group. Um, I actually joined a really, really good Sunday league team um, and we talk a lot about opportunity and, and I actually joined a club where the, the coach was also working for West Ham's academy um, and doing some stuff with South End United. So from 13 to 17, I kind of had him as my as my coach, um, which gave me a lot of good habits. And I was actually playing as a striker, um, literally from well, you talk about 13 to 17 through and yeah right through from 13 to 17 i was i was playing as a striker i, I didn't I, I think it was about around my 17th birthday i actually got moved to a, being a defender but yeah i was a striker and i was reasonably quick striker. Mm -hmm. i was reasonably quick and was able to score a lot of goals um, never even thought about playing as a defender to be honest and it was only when um, in the second year of my apprenticeship that I think the first year I was playing as a centre forward after signing with a YTS with South End United and the first year I didn't score a goal and they said well we're gonna have to do something with you and we're gonna have to look for something else to do so he said, we'll try you at the back. And um, it was literally, I think, I think um, I, I, it, was a, it was a training session where the manager, who was a player manager, wanted to do some, he wanted to do some finishing. So he pulled me to try and mark him. And um, my determination to not let him score was something that I didn't even know I actually had in me to that, that fight to, to not let someone score because I'd always been the other end of the pitch. But from then on, it was sort of a quick transition into the first team. Multiple different things. And we've spoken with the ball and without the ball. I mean, with the ball, the ability to break a line. Like, I think that that's critical for defenders now. My job when I was playing was much more win it and give it to 
other players like Muzzy is it or Neil Lennon or give it to Igor Stimak because they could play and I really wasn't a great baller. So it's my job was to win it and give it to them. Whereas the players now, I think it's much more about being able to to break to break a line to step in. Um, you know, we've seen just having watched the Euros recently and seeing how England players have adapted. It's incredible, and that's all come right through the youth system with St George's Park there, that they've now got these players that can all play. Um, so bravery on the ball, I think, I think in terms of being brave, that ability to have faith and confidence in yourself in terms of a one-on-one -on -one battle. Um, creative's massive, Drew. I, I, I think, you know, has the art of, of a, a, a decent, we talk about a killer pass, but a good pass that breaks a line. You know, it's not everything has got to be 10 meters. We're not, we're not Spain. So let's not try and be Spain. Let's, let's be good Australians and play the way we want to play. Um, and, and you know what, if teams are going to come and press us, then there's nothing wrong with beating the press by playing a clever, creative pass that breaks the line into somebody further up the pitch. Don't mind that at all. Um, what about um, sort of creativity and defending? So you talked about maybe the tackling sort of gone out of the game. Mm. So um, I guess sort of trying to win the ball clean or um, coming across I think things like uh, coming across in the ball, you can either put it into the grandstand or potentially drop a shoulder and come away with it. Do you think that's just more and more as, as people value possession or, or your team having the ball, that, that that starts to become a big part of defending well, as well? Well, we see a lot of stuff, particularly, I mean, the, the players that will be on here would have all gone through skill act, right? So they would have all done all the four core skills, but you know, how much of that one-on-one -on -one time would they have spent doing one-on-one -on -one and working on defending and the attention paid on defending? And, and that that's something that I think is really the the art of dealing with that one-on-one, -on -one, where you go to fake tackle with your front foot. Um, you and I have spoke regularly about running with a player that runs at you rather than jockeying them. And I've, you know, I'm I'm a core believer in that. That, you know, particularly with when I was playing against the likes of Michael Owen, you try and jockey Michael Owen, he's gone past you before you even. You know, everyone's saying slow him down, but it's how do you slow him down? And you try and jockey Michael Owen, he'll just knock it and go, and you've got to turn your hips and go. And and you know, you almost need to run with them and force them one way and slow them down that way. Um, you know, know the players that you're playing against and, and how much, you know, how much time do you spend looking at the players that you're playing against and studying them so that you can best prepare yourself to win your battle? Uh, and that's a big part of being brave and you know, how much scouting do you do as players because ultimately you're responsible for your own performance on the pitch. It's not, it's not your coach, it's down to you as the individuals.